There's few things we love more than HBCU bands. And while we can't get enough of the big name black college bands like the Human Jukebox and Marching 100, sometimes we forget to show love to the small bands out here in HBCU land. Though small in numbers, these bands can pack a big sound and give us a unique energy that sometimes gets lost in the large sections of those bigger bands. And that energy was on full display during Virginia Union's trip to Salisbury, North Carolina to play Livingstone College. And after hearing from both bands in the stands and on the field at halftime, I realized there was more to the quality of a band than just their size and decibel level. My name is Fisher Tony Cousins. I am the director of bands at Virginia Union University. One of the things that's really hard about having a small band is that when you have to convince the band that even though they're small in size, they're big in talent and that they can still compete against anybody with quality. It's absolutely amazing when it actually clicks in their head. I can give them anything, I can put anything in front of them, but it's always just a process getting to that point because you always have intimidation with numbers or intimidation with size, what have you. And so, you know, just because a, a band sounds bigger across the field from you doesn't mean that they're cleaner, doesn't mean that they're more talented. It just means they have more people. My name is Anthony Jones. I'm the director of bands here at Livingstone College. We can actually give more individual attention to a student uh, as far as what they're playing as opposed to them falling in the cracks. Uh, when you got a band, you got 40 trumpets, there, can, there are times and opportunities for a kid to hide or you got 40 baritones or 30 baritones, they can kind of hide and get away with stuff and we depend on the bulk of it. But with, with the kids that we have here, we depend on everybody so we have to give them that special attention. My name is Nathan James. I am the head drum major for the 2019-2020 academic school year. We are able to learn a lot of music in a short bit of time. Uh, we don't necessarily have horn holders. Some people may say some bands have horn holders but I know for a fact that we all have to learn our music, all have to learn our part in order to create the the performance or the actual show that we actually have. My name is Maurice Kimball. I am a senior drum major. One of the disadvantages is being overpowered by a larger band, but our energy and aggression can make up for all of that as well. That's a huge advantage about this band. We have a lot of energy and we have a lot of aggression. My name is Diamond McGee. I am currently acting as Miss Steele for the 2019-2020 academic school year. I'm the first female uh, drum major here at the Ambassador and Sound Marching Band. So it's a big, it's really huge, but it's like, I'm just one of the guys. I enjoy being a drum major of a smaller band. Just imagine like dealing with 400 personalities a day. Ugh, I couldn't do it, I don't know. <laughs> and while the game on the field was a blowout, the band battle on the stands was an instant classic. We watch the 90s, yeah! We bring that sound, yeah! And we gon' show you how to be you, you! Set the skin And it was all in good fun until the band from Virginia crossed the line and played a North Carolina anthem, prompting both squads to have it out note for note.
until an epic counter from the ambassador sound of marching band ended it all. Both Union and Livingstone brought the smoke, the jokes, and the notes, and reminded everyone in attendance why small bands do matter. Just because we're small does not mean we won't blow you out, whoever you are that's watching this. And no matter what the bougie big band crowd has to say, I need all my small bands to stay hater proof and know that pound for pound, them big bands might just drown in the sound of a small in numbers HBCU band. Hi, my name is Asia Banks. Um, this week has been hectic, real chaotic. Like it's, it was surprising. Well, it really wasn't surprising because, like, yeah, we did do our best. But when you guys posted us and we just started getting like all the celebrities and stuff, it was just like, oh my God, wait a minute, the views was just popping. Thank you, HBCU Game Day. To someone on the outside looking in, Winston-Salem State and Wake Forest University may seem like polar opposites. One is a private, predominantly white university with more than 8,000 students. Founded in 1834 on a plantation by the Baptist State Convention of North Carolina. The other is a historically black public research university with an enrollment of just over 5,000 that was started in a one-room schoolhouse with only 25 students and one teacher. And with only five miles separating their campuses, they've been neighbors in Winston-Salem since 1956, sometimes serving as brick and mortar representations of the city's demographic divide. But through what may seem like an infinite amount of differences, the schools were able to find common ground in the sweet sound of music. As Wake Forest invited Winston-Salem State's marching band, the Red Sea of Sound, to share the field at halftime during the Demon Deacons home opener of the 2019 football season. Hello HBCU world, my name is Michael Magruder. I am the director of bands at Winston-Salem State University. We needed something that two groups would come together. Although it's a brief moment for us, but we're still here, they appreciate us being here. We appreciate them even asking us to be here. So we have a great relationship with the city of Winston-Salem. We have a great relationship with Wake Forest band directors. So we're trying to bridge the gap. This is gonna be probably some of the biggest that a few of our bandsmen have performed for. So I think it means a lot to them just to be in front of this many people. You know, we went through a lot of hard work in band camp in the first two weeks of school, and now we get to show everybody on a large stage what the band can do. You gotta have two different personalities. You know, there's the military personality when you gotta get everybody together, make sure the lines are straight. Because then when I'm performing, you know, I wanna make sure that I look as good as possible. Um, I wanna make sure that my moves are nice and crisp. And before the bands united for their halftime performance, they wowed the crowd from the stands as Winston-Salem State's band injected a little extra energy into the already raucous Wake Forest crowd. The Red Sea of Sound is no stranger to being called in to perform at center stage. Sometimes, creating new performance routines in only a week's time. It's hectic at times just because, you know, we're always trying to please the crowd and make sure that our music kind of caters to what the crowd wants. So we have to learn different songs within like a week or so. But overall, you know, we're just trying to make sure that everybody's happy when we leave the performance. One week, get the music ready, get the routines together, make sure you have a drill that makes sense. 
then you move forward. Dr. Magruder will give us the message saying like, yeah, we're gonna be playing here. They want us for this long. They want us to play this many songs. So we'll go in, we have a certain group of students called the Creative Concepts Committee. We'll go in our group chat or meet up in person and talk about what music we want to play, what we think the crowd will like, and then we give the ideas to Dot. And then the next day, you know, he'll have all the music ready and then the band just gets rolling from there. Creativity is the name of the game in this business and we have some very creative students. Our job is to come out here and entertain our fans or anybody who is in reach of us. So it doesn't matter who it is. We just want to be entertaining. We want folk to look at us, recognize us and say, oh, that's the Red Sea of Sound. We know who that is. The bands played together for just over three minutes, but during that time, there was no us and there was no them. It was just we as music was able to unite the two Winston-Salem universities in a moment of literal harmony. I've never seen a better halftime show. One of the best ever. I've ever seen. We should do that every game. Every game. At least every year. Don't you think? No, every game. Every game. Every game would be better, yeah. Yeah. Without thinking of halftime show. Good. It was awesome. It was a great, one of the best we've ever had here. It was great to see both bands on the field together. They did an outstanding job. It was totally enjoyable to stay in my seat the whole time. What y'all think of the halftime show? It was great. Two thumbs up, two thumbs up. Great. They should have been doing it all along. Okay. It was lit. We've got to do it again. I'm thinking every single home game. Honestly, I like the vibe, the music choice, amazing. It was like, oh my gosh, there's a girl trying out for drum major, all this stuff, da, 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 da. And I was like, yeah, I'm doing it. And then I got it, and I was like, yeah, I did it. Honestly, it's just another thing that, I, that I'm able to do. I'm really happy, again, to represent both schools and just show what I could do, show what women can do if they actually try. When we think band battles in the HBCU landscape, we often think about the drum lines hammering down on precision beats, the style and swagger of the drum majors, and the back and forth action from the battles in the stands. Just as important to any good HBCU band battle is the elegance, acrobatics, and creativity of the HBCU dance teams. And the 2016 Queen City Battle of the Band was no exception. Whether they were staying woke like the NCCU Eclipse dance team, who use their time to stimulate the social consciousness of the crowd, or like the North Carolina A&T Golden Delights, who gave us a large-scale choreographed performance equipped with props and wardrobe akin to a Broadway play. And now, ladies and gentlemen, Dauntland, we're sweet, but it won't be right tonight. Creeping through the bug and out of sight. Working in the safe and putting down the walls. The dance teams at the 2016 Queen City Battle of the Bands redefined elegance with every performance.
So at this year's Battle of the Bands, don't forget to show some love to the ladies who give motion to the music, the HBCU dance team. The halftime show at an HBCU sporting event is just that, a show. And when one of the best bands in the land got a full halftime to themselves, they decided to take it up a notch and deliver a show that was more than just entertainment. The North Carolina a and Blue and Gold Marching Machine delivered a tour de force halftime show entitled This Is America, dedicated to topics like police brutality and domestic violence. So we caught up with Assistant Director of Bands for the BGMM, Dr. Lamont Lawhorn, after the game, to get some insights on how a show of this magnitude comes together and becomes more than just your average halftime performance. Well, it's definitely a lot of planning. Uh, we begin show planning probably about March or April. Uh, so all of our shows are pre-planned before the season begins. Uh, it's a lot of creative minds coming together in our war room, as we call it, and um, just putting a lot of things together. No idea is a bad idea until we try to put it into play. So there's a lot of creative minds that come together when we put shows together for the beginning. Today's theme, uh, the show was called This Is America. Uh, what we were trying to do is portray some of the uh, issues or items that's facing America today. Uh, being that uh, this month is Domestic Violence Awareness Month, uh, we definitely wanted to put that in there. Uh, there are some themes uh, as far as police brutality, un unarmed shootings, uh, things that are facing America today, and we just wanted to highlight some of those issues. The show we did today was actually something we were planning to do over the summer, but uh, depending how the schedule worked out, we decided to move it later on in the season. So what we typically have music prepared at least two weeks before the show, uh, before the designated uh, performance, and then we go about learning the music, learning the drill, and then putting all of the theatrics, as, as they're called, in between. going to be a show for us. Uh, we are a marching band and so we feel like your best performance should be on the band field. A lot of times people tend to put their best performance with songs in, in the stands, but North Carolina NC State University Go and Go Marching Machine is a marching band and we're a field show group. That's the priority. So we try to make sure everything is always entertaining. There's always going to be a story. When we come together as far as the show planning, we try to see how can either the song titles or the overall theme of the show tie into what it is we're doing on the field and portray to those who are in the audience to make sure they're enjoying it and have an entertaining show. Mm -hmm. 